everyone so welcome back to my channel this video is going to be very different from what I've uploaded in this channel because it's a little bit more casual I'm just filming it on my vlogging camera I didn't want to fuss around with my <laughs> DSLR and having to set the microphone and do all of that stuff so I just grabbed my <laughs> G7X put it on my tripod and um yeah we're gonna go with it so this video i'm gonna go through the products that i do not want to buy i cannot buy in 2018 as a lot of you may know or maybe you don't know being a blogger or a beauty youtuber it just kind of encourages you to hoard a lot of product hoard products that you purchase and hoard pr products as well so I've reached a point that I just have so many things and I don't use like half of it. It's gotten so ridiculous and I know my collection is so much smaller than other bigger YouTubers but enough is enough. I just tend to use the same products over and over and over so I have them like on rotation and then everything else that I do purchase for like review purposes that's like my most used excuse tend to go in a drawer and they tend to be forgotten so this year i've made a list on my phone <laughs> of things that i cannot buy at all this year so i'm going to go through the categories and why i've chosen those categories so let's start with category number one and that is primer i cannot buy any primer not for the lids not for my face i have my favorite primers for the eyelids it has been the nars pro prime primer that's the only one that works really well for me if i want a drugstore option the wet and wild photo finish primer works really well for oily eyelids if it ain't broke don't fix it and my primer choices are not broken so i'm not gonna fix it that's going to be the reoccurring theme for this video. The other category that I want to completely avoid in 2018 are foundations. My skin knows what it likes right now and most of what it likes is higher end formulas and more natural like base formulas. So this goes for full coverage foundations like medium coverage foundations and tinted moisturizers. I cannot buy any more until I finished one and maybe I want to repurchase it but apart from that no new foundations in 2018 or at least for like the good half of the year I know I'm gonna this is gonna be a very tempting um, category just because of the newer launches but you know what I'm gonna try my best to resist temptation concealers this is another category that I have my clear-cut favorites and I just go for those products over and over and over again my favorite concealers are the glossy perfecting skin tint that i used today when i filmed my this <laughs> this tutorial i don't even know what i'm going to be calling it but you'll see it linked in the information bar as well as on the cards so perfecting skin uh, not perfecting the stretch concealer this is one of my favorite formulas it's very emollient very natural looking on the skin i love it for the center of my face it's what i'm wearing right now the other formula that i've been loving for the past like a year almost a year and a half is the bare minerals bare skin concealer i use the shade light this just looks like skin once again it blends out so seamlessly this does have more coverage than the glossier concealer and bare minerals will be launching a brand new concealer next month it's the bare pro concealer i will be receiving one of them as work gratis so it's <laughs> kind of like cheating but not really just because I'm not purchasing with my own money and it's given it given to me for free at work but I do want to let you know there's going to be a new concealer joining the family very soon but apart from that no more concealers unless I'm repurchasing one that I completely finished up and I cannot live without the next category is going to be completely easy for me to avoid and that is setting powders again I have my clear-cut favorites and it takes me freaking forever to finish up a powder I don't know about you but especially loose powders I don't think I've ever finished a loose powder maybe once and that was like 
the Bare Minerals original mineral veil, but from like, ooh, like early college. It took me like a few years to finish the original jar. So yeah, it's very, very rare that I finish a loose setting powder. I do finish like press setting powders quite easily. Like this is the Bare Minerals Perfecting Veil and you can see I'm just scraping <laughs> what's left. But apart from that, you know, I have so many. Now we're gonna move on to more of uh, the color categories, if you can see. So the first category that I can completely avoid and it honestly won't be much of a hassle to avoid will be bronzers. Because when I bronze my skin, which is not very often, <laughs> I'm more of a blush girl than a bronzer girl. It's just, it is what it is. But when I do bronze my skin, I literally go for either a cream bronzer or a powder bronzer and it's either going to be the Fenty Beauty Match Sticks in Latte, which is what I used for this look today. It's just very natural looking on the skin, very warm, very nice to blend out. But when I want to use powder, I'll go in with the Bare Minerals Invisible Bronze and this one's in the shade Fair to Light, which the reason why I love this is not only because it looks very undetectable on the skin, but it also doesn't pull orange on my skin, which is the number one thing I hate about bronzers myself since I am more on, you know, I'm not super porcelain fair, but I'm more on like the light spectrum. Um, I'm very light skin. <laughs> So I just don't like the way some bronzers make my skin look orange. The other category that I want to completely avoid and not purchase anything, this will be a little bit harder, but highlighters. I just have so many freaking highlighters and I'm not someone that goes ham on highlighters. I don't like having that very stark metallic highlighter that is very um, popular and prominent on Instagram like makeup artists like I just don't like that you know what I'm talking about <laughs> it just looks like a stripe like a metallic stripe and they keep layering it on with a fan brush and layering and packing it on and I'm just like man you literally look like a Krispy Kreme glazed donut I guess that's what they're going for but it's personally not my not my thing I just don't like looking that metallic so I tend to go for more dewy highlighters nowadays something that makes my skin look very radiant and healthy looking you guys know that I don't venture out in the world of blushes much and I have been for the past few years because literally all I wear are the hourglass blushes which I have one right over here hourglass blush I have a few in my collection I have a holiday palette if I blush my skin that's literally all I use unless I'm going for a cream blush which in this case I'll reach for one of the Glossier Cloud Paints or the new Milk Makeup Holographic Stick. My coworker made such a great point that blush is just one of those products that you'll never really get complimented on. It's so rare when somebody will ask you like, what blush are you wearing? Like I, I can probably count the times that I've been asked that. And most of the time I've been asked that is on YouTube. In real life, nobody will ask me what blush I'm wearing. I know I should ban myself from buying <laughs> eyeshadow palettes, but I won't. And this is why I won't ban eyeshadow palettes. It's because of YouTube. This year, I really want to focus on challenging myself to create different looks, do more of the random color challenge. I'll limit the number of palettes that I buy, but I'm not going to ban them completely. The thing that I am going to ban though are eyeliners. I just have way too many eyeliners. And with eyeliners, especially the gel formulas, they dry out so quickly. So I just don't want to be buying a ton of shades and then having them dry out. And the same goes with mascara. I have so many mascaras that are opened and so many that are brand new in the back. <laughs> so I don't know if you remember my Sephora B.I.B. haul. Not, for, not from this past B.I.B. but the previous year, so it was 2016, I purchased one of those Sephora favorites kits and I purchased one of the mascara ones that had like, I don't even know how many mascaras, but I haven't used all of them. I still have so many of those. This is going to be another very tempting 
category just because the drugstore launches new mascaras every like two or three months and I love my L'Oreal mascaras I love Maybelline mascaras but no I'm not gonna buy anymore the other category that I can live without buying anymore are brow products I have really bushy dark brows and so not everything works out for me I find that a lot of brow products either pull too light on my brows or too red and I want something dark and very cool tone because my brows are literally black and they don't need much filling so I just need something very quick and easy what I've been reaching for a lot recently is the Milk Makeup Gel Brow as well as my, you know, my trusty Glossier Boy Brow. I just, you know, I've come to accept that I'm just not a lip gloss girl. I've tried so many different formulas and uh, I just, I don't like the thick goopy glosses. I can live without them. Lipsticks I should ban, but that's one category that <laughs> I won't ban because I freaking love lipsticks and uh, I'll just make sure I if I do buy it'll be very very few lipsticks this year and colors that I can 100% say that I don't own now for skincare I do have a few skincare items that I just do not need to buy and I should not buy because as I've gotten older my skin has become more and more sensitive um, I just don't reach for anything from the drugstore unless it's a more natural brand. So my skin is just, you know, it likes what it likes and I just don't want to fuss with it. I don't want to fuss with it whatsoever. So the categories that I do not need to buy at all and I will avoid buying are cleansers. No more cleansers. No more moisturizers. I have enough of the Glossier Priming Moisturizer which I know, I used to hate that moisturizer, but now I have really, really loved it and my skin has been loving it a lot. I'm good with sunscreen. I'm good with sunscreen for the rest of the year. I don't need any more. I also do not need any more serums unless I have to repurchase one that I completely finished. I have my Luna serum from Sunday Riley. I have my Kiehl's um, Midnight midnight recovery midnight that one the one with the blue bottle and eye creams again it takes me a while to use up an eye cream i still love the bare minerals ageless genius eye cream and those are all the categories that i will not be buying in 2018 i really want to you know declutter a lot of my collection and i think i will be filming a decluttering series in this channel let me know if you do want to see that and if you want to see just a long decluttering video or if you want me to separate them into smaller categories I can do decluttering face products decluttering eye products and decluttering lip products that's gonna that's a whole other thing <laughs> way too many lip products but if you want to see that let me know in the comments below and I would also love to know what are some of the products or categories that you will be avoiding in 2018 so if you're doing something similar to me let me know in the comments below if you're brand new to this channel don't forget to subscribe to see brand new videos from me you can also find my social media links down below so give me a follow on Instagram or snapchat and I'll see you guys very soon in my next one Bye! For blush, I have a few recommendations. The ones that I was using a lot in the month of December were the Glossier Cloud Paints. These ones took me a while to kind of master. <laughs> For the longest time, I just didn't get the point, but after using them consistently in December, I really fell in love with this formula. This is a very 